Queensland in Australia. Let's join me to welcome Professor Mao to give our speech on the topic of CSR on the basis of economic analysis. Let's welcome Professor Mao. Distinguished guests, good morning. I'd like to say thank you to the organizer for such an opportunity. I will be talking about what is social responsible cooperate. According to the traditional categorization, the society can be divided into three different parts according to their functionalities. They are the producer, consumer, and manager. And for the producers, they are the firms. Consumers, they can be the households. And uh, the regulators, they will be the government bodies and authorities. And uh, later on, we have evolved NGO, which will be the fourth part of the whole society. In today's theme, we will be talking about the producer's role in the society. According to their different functionalities, they can be divided into categories as well. In economics, we say the objective of the company is to maximize their profit. Only when the company is profitable can it do benefits to the company, but that's not all of it. It will also do good to the society as a whole. As a whole society, we require and we need the company to be profitable. We don't want any company who sacrifice themselves just to do the so-called service to people. Before the 30 years ago, the companies in China were just sacrificing the resources, and that was a disaster for the whole society. But after the reform and opening up, we need to further learn economics and use the principle to guide the company to maximize their profit. But the profit maximization, is that a correct goal for now? If we look at it in the capital and asset perspective, that is correct. But the production might not be the ultimate goal we are pursuing. Even if we have a lot of capital and assets, we need to allocate them well. If most of the assets we created has been divided and allocated to the wealth generation, that will cause a big gap, and that is not optimal. In the current society, this is a problem facing us. The allocation of the profits is not balanced. In addition, we need to consider the pollution to the environment, as well as other conflicts of the public interests. All of these are solutions awaiting us, awaiting some quick understanding. So for a company, should they still pursuing for the maximization of the asset? That needs a lot of further discussion. Now, we have a new concept, which is the social responsible corporate. So today, I want to share with you my understanding towards the differences, because social responsibility corporate is still fairly new, and there are all sorts of understandings across the whole world. Even in the academic field, there is no universal answer yet. So I just want to take the opportunity to share with you what I think. In different countries, every corner of the world, there are a lot of wealthy people and the generation. For their wealth they have, they don't want to use the money to make more money again, but they don't want their money and assets to be depreciated. They would like to do something beneficial to the society while maintaining the value. In the developed countries, there are more and more assets like this. In China, 
this portion is growing significantly as well. In China, some people are extremely rich. Their money cannot be spent for the several generations, and they are not interested in making more money. So they would like to use it to do something good to the society. Around the world, this portion of money is going bigger. They are not looking for the maximum profit, but they don't want to put the money in vain. So where should this money go? They went to the social responsible corporate. For the social corporate, a responsible corporate, the perspective is very optimal because they have a large finance and resource pool. With these new targets in the society, maximization towards the profit is not their ultimate goal. So the existing regulatory environment and the legal system may not be completely applicable. In addition, the organizational structure, as well as other functionalities, they were all based on the traditional system and the architecture. Since the ultimate goal has changed and evolved, that's why, whether organizationally or legally, we still need to find new solutions and new articles. That's why today, as an economist, I would like to talk to you how I view this different scenario. The goal for a company is to maximize their profit. That is the commercial understanding. It has been having a history for almost one century. Basically, it worked out quite well. But things are changing. With the significant growing of the whole capital and asset, other issues started to pop out and getting more outstanding. Under this scenario, what a company should do, it becomes a completely new issue. If you don't get this issue cleared out. You will not be able to put it into practice. Can the company accept donation? Maybe I donate some of money to a company. The donation will only be to the NGOs. Any other types of company is not applicable to accept the donation, because if you get the donation. This will become the dividend for the stakeholders. Then why would I give my money to you? I would rather give my money to do charity. But if I give it to the stakeholders, that makes no sense. So, for the charity organization, for the NGOs, it is okay for them to accept it because they don't have any product to sell. All of their revenue are. Sourced from the donation, but as a usual functional company, they have、uh, products to make to sell, so they should not be able to take the donation. But for the social corporate, are they applicable for accepting donations? And if you are doing so, can you do something good to the society? Can you provide some value-added benefits to the society? Because you will applicable to enjoy a taxation benefits for the social responsible corporate. Should it be further promoted, or should it be restricted? We are confronted a lot of issues. In my point of view, a social responsible corporate is still a corporate. But as a company, as a corporate, their responsibility is to produce product or services. That's why its essence is still a product. It's still a company. You would either provide services or product or both. And for products and services, it can be sold. This is the basic requirement to be a company and a corporate. But since you are a corporate. You have a product and service to sell. Then how can you price it? The pricing needs to be marketized. As for the price, it decides by the market. It cannot be claimed by the company alone. So as a company, 
I will not do charity, but uh, I will lose. To simply spend money to do charity, that's what NGOs do. As a company, you have to make money. But you also need to generate benefits in addition to making profits. In my point of view, for the social responsible corporate, it is similar to the traditional company in certain ways, which means you need to sell product or service, you need to make profit, you need to sell your product according to the price in the market. But there are also differences. These social corporate companies, they are not seeking for the maximum profit. It is looking for profit, but the profit doesn't have to be maximized. As long as the profit is no lower than the appreciation of the currency, that will be enough for this kind of company. And this should be the requirement from stakeholders to social responsible corporate. As long as you are growing and you reach a balance sheet, that should be fine. The rest of the money are all for social benefits. From an economic point of view, the differences from the two kinds of companies is in a traditional sense, the company is looking for maximized profit, but for social responsible corporate, it is looking for the maximization of the social benefits without losing money. So there are two compulsory requirements for social responsible corporate. Maybe you can be 1% higher of the operation rate. That's enough for you. The money that you make it's not to do the dividend and the bonuses. It is for the social benefits. And if you are the stakeholders, you will only have the dividend out of the 1% profit you make. So the positioning of a social responsible corporate is very different than the traditional company. For SCRs, they are looking for the maximization for the social profits, but for the conventional company, they are looking for maximization profit. For SCRs, you have two compulsory requirements to meet. If you can meet these two standards, you will be able to take advantage of the money you make and uh, use it to the whole society's benefit. Here it comes to another concept, maximization. Profit maximization. You can see it in your balance sheet. But what is the maximization towards the social benefits? Social benefits is a concept that cannot be quantified. You help someone poor, that is something good you do. You improve the environment, that is also something good you do to the society. But which one has bigger value? You cannot calculate it. So the so-called maximization of social benefits cannot be quantified. This is a conflict. You can only feel about it, but there is no scientific measurement. You help five kids to go to school. In comparison to you help 10 people to get employed, which one has more value? It's very hard to define. A lot of problems cannot be quantified or cannot be measured. So this is something tough we should think over. But that's not only about social corporate. All of the NGOs had similar problems. We want to go do things, but you need to have a measurement framework. Many NGOs, they cannot do what they claim to do. They can only tell good stories. For example, how good I am. And you give the organization the money. But we don't have a scientific principle yet to value them. In economics, for traditional company, they maximize their profit. For social responsible corporate, they maximize their social benefits. Under the prerequisite that you should not lose money, this is how we define SRC in 
an economic point of view. So, which kind of company can be divided as SRC? Those company who provide the services for the poor people, maybe you set up private schools, you manage some supermarket, private hospitals, targeting the poor generation. I know that in India, there are many companies like this. For the private companies, they are specifically defined for the poor people. Our private school is designed for the wealth generation. In China, in India, we have very much similar situation, but it is also different. I have visited some of the schools in China designed for the poor generation, but the condition is very bad. They cannot survive that longer in China market. Some of the hospitals were designed for the poor generation. We don't have it in China, but I have saw some in India. For these companies, their main target population is poor generation, but they don't make any money out of it. They are not losing money either. And for the very tiny portion of profit, it is used again to reduce the price. As a magnificent company, that's the most glorious types of company we have. You can make money out of the poor people. Some people say you are taking money out of the poor people's pockets. You are not doing anything good. But to the, the right opposite, if you make money out of the wealthy people, it's simple. For the poor people, they keep their wallets tight. They don't have a lot of money to spend. They will only pay if your service worth everything you charge. Your service and product has to be good for the poor people to be willing to pay. Whether you are school or hospital or shopping mall, if your product is not economical, why would they come to you? I think in China we need to understand these facts. In China, the whole society thinks that if you make money out of the poor generation, that is ethically not correct. But that's not true. If you have the, if you lend money to the poor generation, and with high interests. That is also not good. The so-called lending loans are not ethical. These loans are not for the profit. It's for the benefit of the poor people. I personally have managed some of the schools as well as the training institutions in the past. We lose money, but now we started to make some profits. It is not only for the people. We also have the company who exist for the benefit of the environment. Those company who produce the solar panel heat warmers, uh, water warmers. It saved the traditional fossil energy that is doing benefits to the environment. These companies belong to SRC as well. There are also other organizations who can provide positive energy and positive impact. If what you do is better to the environment, then it will have good social response. In addition to that, maybe you set up a library. Those are all very positive. Or setting up a museum. These are all positive to the society. For these SRCs, what should they do and what should they not do? What they can do is to have bonuses to the shareholders. It is really low. But dividend and bonuses are still allowed. There are some different understanding from other scholars. Someone thinks SRC is not 
okay to take the bonuses, but I think obviously. Secondly, can they enjoy the taxation benefits? I think it is according to the types of your company. If you set up a school for the poor people, I think you should be applicable to enjoy some tax benefits. As a company, if you don't show that significant positive influence, probably you will not be applicable for tax benefits. As for SRCs, you should not take donations because you are not NGO, because you are still a company ultimately. That's why donation is not okay for your stakes. It's okay for you to sell it in the open market. You can sell it. You can buy it. I thought about it as well. For SRCs, the fluctuation of your shares in the market is different than other companies, but it will reach a balance point. It will not go up or go down infinitely. There will be a balance point it will reach. And if I invest in a SRC, if I want to exit, I can sell the stocks. So, for the investors, apart from the dividends, they can also assumes the earnings because of the changes of the stock price. So that is the commonality of SRC and other enterprises. So these are my economic analysis of SRC and also my presentation. So I would like to welcome your comments. Thank you. Thanks very much to Professor Mao. Professor Mao not only is very professional in terms of economics and also for CSR and sustainability, he has shared a lot of viewpoints and he, he has been engaged in a lot of CSR and sustainability activities as well. So from the economic theory, um, Professor Mao has articulated about the characteristics of CSR and the differences from other enterprises. Although SRC is facing the challenges of quantifying the values, but during the last decade, SRC is developing I hope that with the implementation of everyone today and, and with the joint efforts, the SRC will be able to take a very healthy pathway. So let's put our hands together once again for the presentation of Professor Mao. Next. So we'll have about five minutes for questions and to Professor Mao. So this is a very good opportunity. And Professor Mao is a very renowned economist. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask your question. So now I have a microphone in the hand of Candice. So if you have any questions, you can raise your hand. So we have a lady here. OK, thanks very much, Professor. Mao for sharing a very new view. My question is that actually for the SRC in the future, actually for all the enterprises present, so how do we implement this theory? How do we implement the CSR? So I feel that the the theory is a bit far away from what we are doing right now. So can you share with us about the future implementation? <laughs> Professor Mao, you can just sit.
I'm very sorry. So I cannot hear it very clearly. Actually, for this question about the SRC, what kind of opportunity will it bring to entrepreneurs? I think this is a completely different trend. Actually, some entrepreneurs were just a pursuit for maximum profits. And for general entrepreneurs, and the profits are their goal. So they are just looking at how much money you make. They only have one indicator. And for SRC entrepreneurs, their goal is not to make money. So they are trying to maximize the social good, but of course they will also make money. They are entrepreneurs. They know how to reduce costs, how to target the demands, and give、uh, the consumers the maximum values. So it's completely different entrepreneur. They are also entrepreneurs, but they know how to manage the enterprises to achieve maximum profit. But internally, they. Are trying to move towards the social good. So in China, we already have such entrepreneurs emerging. I have a very good friend who is called Shen Dongshu. He is such an entrepreneur. He is very talented. He doesn't always want to make money, but he will not lose money either. If he has money, he will invest that into social benefits. So that gives more alternative options to the entrepreneurs. If you pursue for maximum profits or maximum social good, but you have to still be an entrepreneur. Any other questions? Thank you, Professor Mao. In the last row. Uh, thank you, Professor Mao. My question is:、uh, How do you view corporate foundations that、um, are looking into Creating social benefits, and that live side by side with a corporation that obviously、um, is looking into maximization of profits. His question is: How do you view on the foundation? How to operate the foundation as an enterprise and achieve maximum profits? So. How do you view foundation to be operated as an enterprise? And in general, a foundation is an NGO.、Uh, such kind of organization is not profit for profit maximization, uh, uh, just for the maximization of a public good.、Uh, I think this kind of foundation. Uh, have achieved a lot. For example, Ford Foundation, which is a worldwide uh, uh, NGO, and、uh, their office in China provided a very good service for Chinese development. Uh, uh, I don't know whether I answered your question. How? <laughs> Okay, because of time limit, I will allow the last question. If you haven't had any opportunity, you can also ask questions to Professor Mao during the break.、Um, Professor Mao,、uh, I have a question about China's environmental NGO. Normally, they started from grassroots as an NGO. During the last two to three years, in China's environmental study. So we look a lot upon the transformation of the NGO. Actually, a lot of organizations that are no longer at the grassroots, but I think most of them are doing more、uh, like very high-end things, but for intervention of the society or pay attention to the grassroots are actually disappearing among the NGOs. So for NGOs. For how do you look upon their transformation of social responsibility? Actually, I cannot hear it very well. I think for NGO, it's completely different from en enterprises. Their products cannot be sold. For example, charity. 
how do you make sell the charity? You will not get any revenue, so you can only rely on donations. So this is the biggest difference of NGO. And also, Unirule Institute is also an NGO. We are not doing charity. Unirule Institute of Economics is is doing researches about economic policies, case studies. If we want to sell, we will sell it to Premier Li. But he hasn't asked to buy anything from us yet. But it's so all our results are provided free of charge to the society. So we are an NGO. Our income is mostly based on donation domestically and internationally. So I think our institute has gone through over 20 years for Chinese economic reform. We have provided some proposals. I think we are playing some role in China's reform. I think maybe I answer is not right to your question. I'm very sorry. Okay, thank you very much to Professor Mao.